So, welcome to the nightmare that is redoing the cam gear on a 300L straight six engine from Ford. To be more precise, one from the era of 1985. Uh, 240,000 miles on it. Was driving it home from just purchasing the thing. And it died. <laughs> and, uh, turned out that the uh, cam gear had exploded. So this is a picture after I've uh, pulled the radiator. And uh, just about to start tearing into the thing. Getting into all the ugliness. So with that, let's get on to the video. So what we have here is a 300 liter or the 300L engine straight six by Ford and an F-150. And as you may can tell, uh, well, we have gears here, but down here, they're all stripped. Um, I'll not go into the backstory on this. Don't want to bore you. But uh, anyway, suffice to say, we've got the small gear off for the crank. Here's the cam gear. And it's made out of this fibrous material that uh, likes to break, as you can tell. What I've already tried to do is drill holes and tap them to a 5 8 And tried using my chicken foot puller. And that didn't work. The, uh, you know, we only did two bolts and one side yielded and, you know, pulled out on this material, whatever the heck you want to call it. Some say it's plastic, some kind of fibrous material, whatever. Whatever it is, it sucks. So anyway, I uh, went out and I purchased a tool just for the occasion. And this is made by Tang, T-E-N-G. As you can see here. And I'll show you the box. And it is the two-arm universal puller. And their stock number, SP1410. Okay. So, it's a... Uh, both internal and external uh, puller, which is a nice idea. Strip goes straight across and very similar to a Pitman arm puller. So then what I've done is just simply taken these two off, flip them around. Now we have external setup. Um, the fitment in here is pretty tight, so you can't just put one end in and then put the other end in. But since this comes off, like so, you get one side in, like so, I get the other side in, like so, and then get the two to come together, hopefully. Get a little weeble wobble going there, okay. So there it is, it's uh, fitting in there quite well, actually. And I'm a, I'm hard to tell, I'm aligning the center bolt so that it sits directly in the center. And the one thing from Tang they did not give me was one of those little aluminum center pieces. So I don't like the idea of this bolt going all the way straight into the shaft. So I have one from a, my chicken foot spreader. Uh, chicken foot puller, rather. I'll put that on. Uh, before I do that, let's put some WD-40. Not 
sounds as if I haven't done this a thousand times already. More can't hurt. seems to fit and it's a 17 millimeter and it's fitting on the end just perfect all right so I'm gonna pull out a little more on this end I really start to tighten things down so it's not up a bit I want to get this foot as far into the material as possible. So, you may have seen other videos where, uh, I'll for forget the gentleman's name, an older fella, uh, and he had done the trick with uh, running the bolts in there, um, and he was going very slowly for good reason. You don't want to be too aggressive with this and then just snap the material if there's any chance of the pressure working its way in pulling it off all the stressors are gonna be pretty much along the center I would imagine so uh, we want to make sure give that time to you know apply so I'm going by feeling how much separation there is between this uh, the center collar and this uh, and the actual end of the camshaft that's these two parts right here. Um, so um, what I'm going for is I'm, I would like to hear it pop or just see it sliding off. I'm going to go slow. It's feeling tight, but not. I'm not feeling it bottoming out really. So let's take a look at it from the side. So here from the side, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this on camera. If not, I apologize. But from the side view, we can actually see it pulling here a little more so there's there's a good amount of tension on this thing maybe I'll swing the camera around okay so you see that It's hard to tell, but you can sort of see where it's distended out a little more right along here where the puller has its jaw in there. Start a few wax. Give it another quarter turn. 
turn. This thing's under plenty of tension, that's for sure. But what I don't like is the fact that I don't feel a lot of tension building up as I'm cranking down it. It feels pretty, pretty much the same. I'm tempted to let this here sit for a while and then come back when, uh, Oh, after I go do a couple things around town, perhaps, and see if this thing might just yield on its own a little bit, sitting here with the tension on it, because uh, what I don't want to have happen is have this thing crack and then, you know, have it cut the whole damn thing off. I'm trying to avoid that desperately. What do you think? One more quarter turn? Mm, maybe an eighth of a turn. Still nothing. And I can definitely feel the this thing is pulling out on the sides for sure. I'm going to go inside and maybe charge up the phone and come back take a few more wax at it with the hammer and we'll see what happens well she came off sort of the inside part of the gear is still here and here's the rest of it so we got that So this half came off, and then these two halves had to pry them off the screwdriver. My very high quality Stanley screwdriver. Last one of them I'll ever buy. Anyway, so, but interesting thing that I noted here. See, there is a groove right there, and the puller I just bought is internal and external, so there should be no problem with getting that on there. So hang on, and we'll go for round two. And in case any of y'all are wondering, I had mentioned a chicken foot puller. That's a chicken foot puller. I shouldn't have to explain it. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm just gonna size this thing up. Bolt centered in. It seems to be sitting in there pretty good as is right now. Or get too many of you people get it screaming and yelling. Lubricate the bolt. Okay, I hear you. There. Happy now. And I don't want to wear out my 
bolt prematurely. Centered in nice. Good, and that was a little loose and tightening up again, and we're rotating again. Oh. Starting to pop, and pops left and right here. That's a good sign. And do it. Oh, we're getting some movement. You can actually see it moving now. Ratcheting nice. It's pulling off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Look at that. Holy shit, it's off. You can see that in focus. Yeah. So, thanks to Tang Tools. Thank you guys. You designed a very good removal tool for this hell bastard of a job. And there's the gear, or the shaft, I should say. Keyways over here. We just got to get the keyway to go up. We gotta get this keyway to go up. So when we put the gears on, the dots should pretty closely align. Uh, but this is no problem. We get the bolt in there and we'll turn it to the desired position. We can do the same with this. And no one will be the wiser. So. Like separate this here. <laughs> Good luck. To hammer this apart. There we go. So a bit right in. To the side of that thing with uh, pretty good precision too I might add but uh, and I actually had to hammer it on there a few times but it it's a really good fit so for anyone else that's about to conquer this job or attempt to and you want a puller that you can still get to do it I would definitely recommend I'm not being paid to endorse nothing. So if they want to send me a, a note. Boy, Tang Tools. And their stock number SP1410. I got it off of Amazon. There's another... Uh, I'll see if I can link to it in the doables below. There's another fella who uh, just went, you know... Uh, gorilla crazy on the damn thing not that I blame him for having to resort to it but uh, it looked like he, he, he also did some damage to the keyway and the shaft here uh, so you want to avoid doing that if you can hooray I'm gonna have a drink or two 
to celebrate and then maybe tomorrow we'll get the gears that are supposed to be on here on you can seal it up and eventually get it to fire up so just to go over uh, what I used her replacement is uh, the, this set of gears right here made by sealed power and if you want to look on Amazon the part number is 221-2764S like Sam and uh, you'll get that metal uh, cam and uh, crank gear as you see here and here's a photo of what the original setup looked like um, and you can see that some kind of weird composite material on that uh, cam gear God only knows what it is it's terrible stuff uh, apparently the only reason it was ever installed was for noise which doesn't make sense because Ford F-150s are awfully noisy to begin with <laughs> you know it, it, it's a truck I mean who the hell cares about a little bit of uh, cam gear noise it's beyond me but anyway that's what they gave on that 300 engine So here's what it looks like to have the two metal gears aligned properly. As you can see, the two dots on uh, the crank and the cam go towards each other on the inside. And uh, you line those two up, and you're good. So here's the timing cover painted up all nice and blue, and the new water pump as well. Hey, so after we left this engine, it was uh, not quite as together as it is now. Let's take a look at the front. So, with the fan spinning, we got our cover on. Got the water pump, got the cover, brand new harmonic balancer. And the old nut, in case you're wondering, I bolt, I put a thread lock on there, cleaned it off real good, put the thread lock on, let it cure. You know, it's been a couple days now. Should be fine. And uh, what else? We're, well, I'm putting in a water uh, thermostat just because the whole thing's apart, and I might as well. Uh, nice shiny thermostat. Big deal. I'm sure you want to see it fire up. So do I. But, um, so I just thought I'd give you a sneak peek. Okay, well, I got her all buttoned up and, uh, all the water's in, about to crank her over for the first time. This is a virgin restart. Probably will have to pour more water in it for uh, antifreeze. It's not down all the way yet. I'm sure there's some air in there. But let's crank her over, see what happens. of what it did when I first got the thing home. Not start. Okay, so over there I got the sparkulator probe. We'll see if it's uh, doing anything. Well, 
Senator Spark to the primary. Okay, so there was success on the primary. So let's try it again. Let's see if we go to the number one cylinder here. Let's see if we get a spark there. Okay, well, I squirted some uh, starting fluid in there. Here we go. Now there is a bit of an exhaust leak, you can hear it when you go. When you come on over to the exhaust side of things. There's definitely a thing or two uh, dirty gas that it shouldn't. Other than that, sounds like a well broken in 300 to me. Very well broken in. 240,000 miles worth. Don't see no leaks on the ground there. Could probably do with a new cap and rotor, but. Actually, it seems to be running okay in terms of sparky sparks. All right, let me get the tires on this bad bitch and take it around town. Oh yeah, there's one other thing. A ceremonial thing that we have to do. Trees. This thing deserves a tree. Ooh, this thing smells like a goddamn forest already. All right. She has her tree. Yeah, let's take this crazy girl for a ride. Son's not playing nice with my Bula girl. Just pass me up like that. Head for the red light. People in this town are crazy. They gotta pass me just because they, they can pass me. Even though they're not going anywhere. Is it like that in your town? Let me know. I'm curious. Seems once you get near uh, four or five o'clock around here, it's every man for himself. Every woman too. Well, it's green light now, let's get going. 
where he's going except the guy in front of me. Not that always the case. I've been driving around this truck for a while now and having a blast with it. Great investment for 1500 bucks. So this is Joe from I Repair Electronics and Trucks and Cars and uh, out there and spin some wrenches. It's fun. <laughs> 